So I'm uh, given the last part to talk about along the same topic on, uh, the, on racism and, and uh, inequality and to talk specifically about the Muslim role in addressing injustices such as have occurred with Standing Rock, with the, the wall being threatened to be built on our southern border, the travel bans that became known as, uh, as Muslim ban, and of course, even the Flint water crisis. So in the 20-some in the minutes that I have, obviously we, we, we cannot do justice to each of those causes, but what we can say is that we as Muslims, we as Muslims have to really come to terms with the fact that ours is a privileged, is a privileged position in America. We are a very privileged group. And if you don't believe me, I want you to reflect how history has treated us here in America. Muslims have been here for seven centuries, but for the first six centuries, if you will, or even six and a half centuries, essentially the story that was being written was mostly of the slaves, the forced migration that occurred predominantly from West Africa into the United States. And if you reflect upon another Easter weekend, because this is the weekend of Easter that we are gathering to, uh, to have this convention, but in another Easter weekend, in fact, on March 29th, 1964, Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz, Malcolm X, in a speech called The Ballot or The Bullet in Washington Heights, New York, specifically said this. He said, we are a people who were formerly, formerly were Africans who were kidnapped and brought to America. Our forefathers weren't the pilgrims. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. We Muslims who are the products of the 1965 civil rights movement and the change in immigration laws that allowed for migration from Africa and Asia to begin, we landed here. We did not land here and go to serve the causes of social justice. We landed here and because of the position of power and privilege, we went straight to the suburbs. We passed up and walked over and drove over and took buses around all of the inner cities that were literally rioting and crying in pain because of the injustices of slavery and segregation and on and on. So when we gather in conventions like this, if we don't begin with ourselves to say that there cannot be a single Native American descendant nor a single descendant of the slaves, nor a single descendant of the Hispanic or the Mexican community in particular for the southern border, nor those who are suffering from either the Flint water crisis or the fact that a young black man or even a woman in some cases can actually be killed by law enforcement with a clear indication that society has somehow decided that a particular set of lives do not matter if we sit around and use these conventions just as another form of entertainment, then it is an utter and despicable loss of time. We have to get over that and say that using these conventions will be a starting point, inshallah ta'ala, to turn back to our own religious principles, such as those that Brother Nihad Awad and Dr. Hatem already mentioned that ours is a religion whose cornerstone is justice, whose cornerstone is social justice. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in Surah An-Nisa, saying to Muslims, saying to mankind, Muslims particularly, addressing us as Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, and the verse goes on to say, A'adilu, be just, huwa aqrabu li taqwa, that being just is associated directly, directly and closest to the achievement of taqwa. And the achievement of taqwa is nothing more than subhanAllah, God consciousness. That when a person is conscious of his or her position vis-a-vis -vis his or her creator, then that person 
is emboldened in a way, stands up in a way to say that wherever there is just injustice, wherever there is injustice, my heart and my conscience should be pricked and my heart should be breaking and I should be able to say, by Allah, if I have even an ounce of power and privilege, I must use it not to advance just myself and my career and my family and additional wealth, but instead I should be trying to advance all of the other causes whereby people are still suffering from injustice. So brothers and sisters, even before Plymouth Rock, there was and always has been Standing Rock. And that Native American population that was systematically decimated and relegated to reservations, to be put on these reservations and where the newest, where the newest of crises facing that community, a community rich with culture and tradition, a community that lived off the land and actually knew very well its position in, in, you know, in association with that land is now desperately trying to preserve literally their way of life and this pipeline would destroy whatever is left of their way of life. The insidiousness, the insidious nature of the way people are being dealt with and as we watch and we go on our browsers and we surf the internet and we use our phones to open up links and click here and click there, all we are doing is being slacktivists, people who are slacking back, who are involved in clicktivism, which is clicking here and clicking there. At some point, at some point, we are going to have to stand up in the last third of the night and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, oh Allah, for this power and privilege that you have given me, for this power and privilege you have given me, let me be a tool, let me be a source, let me be a means through which the understanding of some of these amazing you know, instances of injustice, at least the understanding and the framing and the reframing of the, of the issues are dealt with through me in some capacity. We have to come to terms with the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not only was he involved with what is known as the Alliance, Alliance of Virtue, the Hilf al-Fudul, before Nubuwa, before prophethood, which actually looked at the vulnerable and the oppressed in society, but he categorically said that if he was to be called after Islam to be joined such an alliance of virtue that would uphold the rights of those even if they are not Muslims, but they are victims and they are actually victims of injustice and the sheer abuse of power and privilege that he would have stood with them. Brothers and sisters, you and I are literally be being given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a small window of opportunity. That the entire 21st century, by the will of Allah, has been and continues to be about Islam and Muslims. Even though it began in 2001, with those horrific terrorist attacks, whatever the wisdom behind why Islam and Muslims are being mentioned in every single news cycle, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that is a window of opportunity. No young person, no old person who is a Muslim in America can say, that doesn't affect me. What's happening there is not about me, no. It is everything to do with you. It is everything to do with you and I. And we have to be able to say that if we look, and if we look at the practical ways we can do this, there is nothing, nothing stopping us from advancing, advancing the causes of restoring justice. So what should we do? Number one, we are an ummah whose entire religion began with the word ikra as a command to read, whether you take it literally or metaphorically to comprehend the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to read 
and to understand and to appreciate the sheer depths of history, of the history of injustices in our land, in our home, these United States of America, if we do not read, if we do not understand how systematically and ingrained is injustice, we will actually be at a very superficial level of analysis. Now, can you read about everything? Absolutely not. Would you get lost in the literature just to understand all of the depths and the intricacies that are involved in this Dakota pipeline and with the issue of Standing Rock? You couldn't do it. However, if that's what moves you, if somehow Allah gave you that emotional turmoil inside and you say, I can't imagine that this is what's happening to the Native American people, then use that as a signal that that's your issue. Use that as a signal to say, that's my issue and I'm going to specialize and I'm going to keep reading about the history of Native Americans. I'm going to be, read the history of their culture, their rich culture and their traditions and I'm going to understand the death and devastation that is going to be unleashed should this pipeline go through their current uh, land, if you will. Similarly for the wall, this wall that is being threatened, when the hashtag came out with no ban, no wall, it basically connected for people forever and forever to come that systematically using the executive order or legislation to block people from migrating to the United States by virtue of their religion, such as the Muslim ban, not only, not only is there no constitutional precedence for something like this, trying to do something like that actually sets us back, sets us back over a century in terms of the progress that has been made right here in the United States of America. There have actually been pieces of legislation that were not even politically correct or close to being politically correct. The Chinese Exclusion Act, the Asiatic Barred Zone. These are actual pieces of legislation. They are on the books of the United States of America. We cannot go back to that time. We cannot go back to a time when people's racial and ethnic background and indeed now their religion are being used to de deny and defy indeed the Constitution and prevent us from being here. But what will be done? What about the wall? This is not somebody else's problem. If you look within the, Lat the Hispanic and the Lat Latino community, more and more the similarities between faith-inspired families are becoming obvious. Hispanic population, the African-American population, an amazingly spiritual and religiously founded population. When they find out that Muslims are not some strange beings, that we have family values, we have values that are very similar in so many ways, they are appealing to us, running towards us, and we are running away from them. We should turn that trajectory and that tide and turn it back and say, I have read about this. I have understood this. I appreciate the gravity of this moment. And so I can and will do something about it. In Flint, we have an amazing, amazing success story of the Muslims who became involved at the earliest of stages of that water crisis. So despicable was that water crisis that General Motors, the automotive industry, General Motors based in that area, their engineers found out that the toxicity and the, and, the, and, the, and the presence of all of that, you know, the toxicity in the water supply was actually going to affect the production cycle in the factory. And so they paid off to have the original source of water supply, which was non-toxic and not, you know, not nearly as lethal as what was done to the rest of the Flint population. They paid off to have the water rerouted power and privilege. They were able to maintain that factory and they went on with their lives while their own neighbors, 
Some of their own workers and their families literally watch their families fall apart, their health fall apart, the physical health fall apart, learning disabilities that develop, developmental disabilities that develop in those beautiful young boys and girls in Flint. Alhamdulillah, the Muslim community came there, not only was already there and supported the, the bringing to, you know, to, to the public attention this, the, the depravity of this issue, but then came in to provide relief to, pro to providing water and, and water bottles and all kinds of water supply to help the families overcome this. I'm closing by saying this. This is our century. This is a century of Islam. This is our moment. This is the time that we have to look up and say, enough is enough. We as Muslims can no longer be bystanders as uh, all of these in injustices prevail. We must indeed turn back to our faith in the spirit of the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say that wherever there is injustice, and a Muslim becomes aware of it, we will do everything possible either by using our time, our talent, our wealth, and especially our prayers, our dua, to turn to Allah and appeal to him to say, oh Allah, lift this injustice, allow justice to prevail, and help us to be tools and means of alleviating that those injustices from the lives of our brothers and sisters. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.